three things you're grateful for. This is an extremely powerful exercise. Does anybody know what they would call it in the Southern Hemisphere? Being in a rut, down in the dumps? Does that make sense? Have you ever been in a rut? Down, depressed? A few years ago, I was down, down. And I started a simple exercise where I wrote down three things a day I was grateful for. And I added a fourth about my wife. And I decided to do it for 21 days, and I was told this would make a big difference in my life, and I didn't believe it, so I was gonna prove them wrong. Three things a day, and then the fourth about my wife. About five or six days into it, I had this extreme wave of guilt come over me because I felt like I ran out of things to be grateful for. And I had to start finding them. I really felt guilty that I ran out of things to be grateful for about my spouse, my wife, my partner, of over 20 years. So I had to start finding things. And so I did, little things, the way her hair smelled, the way the shower smelled when she was done with it, because the shower doesn't smell that way when I'm done with it. <laughs> I imagine when you walk through the gates of heaven, it smells like when my wife gets out of the shower. That's probably what heaven smells like. So I started noticing all these things. And after 21 days, people started noticing something different about me and my attitude. And looking back, here's what I realized happened. The whole point of the exercise, of what I did and how it changed me, was I started looking for what was right. I started looking for it. Because if you look for what's wrong, I promise you'll find it. I promise you will find it. But if you look for what's right, I promise you'll find that too. So you think about today, I want you to look for what's right. I want you to look for one or two things you can apply to your business because training has to be three things. Relevant, meaning it's important to you. Actionable, but those two are meaningless unless it has the third thing, which you put it into action, you apply it. So if you just get one thing today or yesterday that you can apply, change lives, change your lives, change your business, amazing things can happen, but you have to look for it. And again, if you look for what's wrong, I swear you'll find it every single time. But as you think about yesterday and today, I want you to focus on what's right. How this impacts your business personally is when you get in the habit of looking for what's right, looking for good things, looking for the best in people, people will look at you differently. That is a promise and that will have a profound impact on your leadership, your business, your relationships, and your income. Now yesterday, one of my biggest takeaways was how Scott Bardoon started the day. He challenged all of us, are you where you want to be? Are you doing everything you can do? Are you satisfied with where you're at? Is there more? Are you going after more? Are you hungry? Are you really challenged? Hit me personally. What I really like about Scott is trust. It's for me, trust and integrity is when what people say about you behind your back. Because anybody can say something nice to your face. But how they describe you behind your back is really how they feel about you. And I know Scott Bardoulis, I know how he describes me behind my back because people call me after he talks to me, after he talks to them, and they say, I just talked to Scott Bardoulis, I have this challenge, he told me you are the guy that can handle it. You are the guy that can fix it. You will find the right people to fix it. You're the only one that can help. I know that because people tell that to me. Here's how I also know it. Juliet didn't think my wife was real because she had never seen her. <laughs> and Scott had my back there too. Although it got to a point where Scott said, hey, um, we should probably meet your wife because uh, I'm not thinking she's real either. But they finally did. But I know he had my back. So Scott Bardoulis is a guy you can trust. I would trust him with my car keys. I would trust him with my bank account. I trust my kids. I trust my wife. But here's my favorite part of Scott Bardoulis' trust. He trusts me. He knows when I've talked to someone in his group, it was a good thing. It was a warm like He doesn't have to worry about it. And that's the ultimate trust anyone can pay me, whether it's Scott Pardoulis, Tom Chenault, Cheryl Morley, Stephen Michelle is trusting me with all of you. So yesterday he kicked us off with challenging you. Are you where you want to be? Today he's going to take that to the next level. He's going to take that up a notch. He's going to give you the actionable steps to get where you want to go and put it into action. 
Are you going to put it into action when you leave today? Yes. Yes. So three of you? Yes. Are you going to put it into action today? Yes. Yeah. Scott talked about how we welcome people. We want everybody on their feet and welcome our MC from yesterday. He did a phenomenal job to talk to you today, Scott Fardoulis. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, and you dream about the dolphins. Wasn't that a great meal last night? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. It's like first class all the way. Yeah. So, systems. Systems are super, super important. And they're important because if you don't have a system, there's a million ways to do something. And if everybody's doing a different something, and there's a million different versions of it, then how do you get conformity? How do you get unity? How do you get people marching down the same path, following that yellow brick road? When you were a kid, did you, do you remember the nursery rhyme and the little song that said, follow the yellow brick road? Remember that one? <laughs> well, I kind of think about that little jingle, if you will, and how it relates to what we do here at Longevity. I think I was traumatized when I was a kid about systems. I remember my first day of school, kindergarten, and it was a big day for me. My parents were prepping me to ride the big yellow bus, and they said there's gonna be a lot of kids on this bus, and you've got this responsibility to make sure you get to the bus stop on time, and you get on that bus, it'll take you where you need to go, and you're gonna get off the bus, and you're gonna walk in the big building, you're gonna do your thing, and then you have to get on bus number 28 when you're done with the day, and that'll take you right back to here where we'll pick you up. And I said, simple enough. But I was so nervous. I got on that bus and I was sitting there. I remember I had my little lunchbox. Is anybody here old enough to remember a very famous motorcycle stunt rider named Evil Knievel? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, Evil Knievel was my little boy icon hero. And I always wanted to be like him and ride motorcycles. And I remember that. That's another story. But I had my little Evil Knievel lunchbox. And I'm walking to the bus stop and I've got that little box and I'm looking at how cool it is. It's got his graphic and his face on there. And I thought that was the neatest thing. And I went about my day and everything was going right until about two minutes before I was supposed to catch that bus because the bell was gonna ring and my parents said, whatever you do, do not miss bus number 28. And I said, okay, got it, bus number 28, I'm gonna do this. And two minutes before the bell rings, all of a sudden I had that extreme urge to go to the bathroom. And it was an overwhelming sensation, that's all I'm gonna tell you about that. And I knew that I had to go to the bathroom, but at the same time, I'm thinking, I'm about to break the system. The system didn't say, when the bell rings, go to the bathroom, it said, find bus number 28 and get on that bus. And yet, I had to go to the bathroom. So emergency was calling, I ran into the bathroom, and I'm just, I was so nervous because I'm like, there goes the bell, I'm in the bathroom, I'm in the stall, and there was a window right here, and I could look out the window, and I could see all the kids getting on the bus. And everyone was on that bus except for me. And I panicked, and I thought, I'm missing the bus, I'm missing the bus, how am I gonna get home? My parents are gonna be there, I'm not gonna be there. Keep in mind, this is way before the invention of cell phones or technology or texting. Who texts from the toilet anyway? So anyhow, <laughs> that was all out the door. But there they were, and I'm not done yet, and I'm thinking, okay, this is going from bad to worse. And so I did what I thought I had to do. And from that little stall, as embarrassing as this is to admit to all of you, from that stall, I yelled at the top of my lungs to my kindergarten teacher. I called out her name as loud as I could, and I said, Mrs. Claiborne, Mrs. Claiborne, help. And she comes to the door of the bathroom, are, are, are you okay in there? And I said, Mrs. Claiborne, it's Scott Fardulis, and I'm gonna miss bus number 28. And she says, don't worry, I'll hold the bus. And I remember getting on that bus, and everybody teased and ridiculed me relentlessly. It was an overwhelming issue. And I lived with that for several years, that I was the kid that held the bus up from everybody else getting where they needed to go because I was going to the bathroom. And to this day, it traumatizes me. So this is my therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I've got the bathroom story off my chest, so I can go about my life now and, and, and be okay. Thank you for letting me do that. It has nothing to do with anything except I just had to. Kidding. It is all about systems. And so now that you have that wonderful image in your head, think about the metaphor of, if you will, about what happens in your life and in this business when there's such a simple system and all you have to do is get on what bus? 28. You just have to get on bus number 28. And if you'll stick, what is so funny from that corner gallery? <laughs> and if you'll just get on that bus and follow that yellow brick road, then things get really, really simple. So here's the thing. You're welcome to do anything you want. This is, after all, Australasia. And you, you're welcome so long as you abide inside the, the policies and procedures of the company and you want to exercise your liberties and freedoms to build this business under the policies and procedures, you're welcome to do as you please. But I'm going to share this with you. Just know this. I'm a simpleton. And as soon as you get things too complex for me, whoosh, the wall goes down, my eyes blaze over, and I'm suddenly not here. I'm in another planet, I'm in another world, and I'm the guy that says, you lost me because it's not duplicable. If it's not simple, it's not duplicable. If you have to spend all of your time and days and hours and weeks and years and months explaining something for somebody to just get from where they are in their life to where they'd rather be, then we lose people. And this is a business where we depend on capturing and retaining people, not repelling them and keeping them back. Does that make sense? Okay, are we all on the same page here? Yeah. How many yep. of you, by either your voice or by a show of hands, would like to know how in four and a half years, my wife and I got started on square number one or brick number one inside of Longevity, having not much to quite frankly speak of. We had each other, we had our family, um, we were struggling with some health issues, we were definitely struggling financially, admittedly. and. In four and a half years, we went from square number one to rookies of the year, to circle of excellence award winners, to senior vice chairman marketing directors, to diamond chairman marketing directors. Would you like to know how we did that in four and a half years? Yes, sir. You. Okay, perfect. Well, you came to the right spot. So keeping in mind systems and simple systems, this is what I'm gonna show you. So up here to either side of the screens, this is something that's been built and we put this together with a lot of thought and a lot of love and keeping things simple. I'm not gonna go through this, but this is an actual presentation that you'd find myself or Tom Chenault doing any night of the week. So I do this once a week, every single week, and this is what we do. So the first thing we do is we address this issue. The issue is, does this business work for everyone? And the answer is yes, but we have to show them that it works for everyone. So we've identified three different categories of people. So we have, and I think these are universal, and if they're not, please tell me, because I, I don't want to be uh, misspeaking here. But have you ever heard this concept of the millennial generation? You all heard that? Okay, so let's just take a look at this. Here's the millennials. What do you want to know about millennials to speak their language? You want to know that they're in that age bracket. You want to know that they uh, want freedom and flexibility in their life. They're very digitally oriented and the world never comes to an end. It's always moving. Does this make sense? Okay, so this is a very fast paced group of people. The next group of people that we're addressing is Generation X. You ever heard of that term before? Okay, so there's the age bracket and you can see all there is to know about Generation Xers. These are just bullets and highlights, but the main thing is they want work-life balance. These are people that have been going at it for maybe 20 years of their working career so far. They, pro they might possibly be married, they might possibly have some kids by now, but they're, they're, they've got themselves totally extended and now they're going, okay, we might have a little bit of money, we got our I's dotted and our T's crossed, but we're out of balance. The pendulum is swinging heavily one direction. The next group, you ever heard of baby boomers? Okay, so this is a very large group of people and that's the age group they're in. What do they want? They want job security. And the reason why they want job security is because they're about ready to do what? They're about ready to retire. And so that little millennial group over here, they're ready to run circles around the baby boomers and if they hiccup one time, they'll take their jobs. That's the fear at least. And they cannot afford to be pushed out prematurely 
And so this is the danger or the tightrope that the baby boomers walk. So what we're saying here with this slide is just identify yourself. So let's just take a poll in here. How many of you in this room are millennials? Raise your hand if you're a millennial. Okay, raise them high. Keep them up for just a second. So we have uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have about 12 of you in the room that are millennials. How many of you are Generation X? Identify yourselves. Okay, I am too. I'm holding my hand up. I'm Generation X. Okay, so that's probably about 25% uh, of the room. Interesting. Now, overwhelmingly, watch this. How many of you are baby boomers? Raise your hand. Wow. Wow. Interesting. So there's roughly 70% of the room is baby boomer generation. Now let's just stop for a second. This is really important, at least in my mind, and I hope by the time I'm finished it's important to you as well. Why do you think, overwhelmingly, that we have 70% of the population of this room filled with baby boomers? Speak it. Come on. Health. They're broke. Security. Approach, security, health. <laughs> okay, great answers. You're all right. There's no, there's no wrong answer to that question because some of you that are baby boomers are actually telling us about yourselves right now. Well, for a long time, the Longevity has been operating as a health-driven company. And by the way, isn't Longevity a health company? Yes. yes. Who's most concerned about health? Yes. Who's most concerned about health? Baby boomers. Baby boomers are most concerned about health. Health hasn't come yet typically for the millennial person. And if 70% of you leave this room and you're wanting to speak your language, who are you recruiting? Baby boomers. Baby boomers, 70% of you are going to recruit baby boomers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Who up here is ready to run circles? Say it again. Millennials are ready to run circles around everybody up here. They've got energy, they've got drive, they wanna to prove to the world that they've got something to offer. The corporate world is not ready to give them that chance yet. And so they're constantly beating down the millennials saying you're not old enough, you don't have enough experience. So they walk in here, you make them feel empowered and suddenly, suddenly, you have an army of people that are ready to prove to the world that they mean business. And so let me plant this first seed in your head, perhaps, that a very missing in action group of people is this millennial generation right here. I am so focused on this group right now, it's crazy. I'll tell you one fast story. There's a, a, a young man that's 24 years old. Um, he goes to church with us. And after church, about four months ago, he came up and he says, I've been following you, I've been watching you, I want you to mentor me. I said, great. Are you willing to put in some effort? He said, yes. I said, will anything stop you? He said, no. And I said, you're my kind of guy. Are you ready to roll up your sleeves? He said, yes. I said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. And we laid out the plan, which you're seeing right now. We laid out the plan and I said, are you willing to take this on? He said, yes, I am. He now has a very large organization. Um, he helped build this PowerPoint presentation. If you want to think like a millennial, go get a millennial. Right? So they helped us put this together, and now you know this is how we bridge people together and pull people together so that no matter who you are in this group, you're saying, this is for me. Don't you want everybody that you talk to to find a place for themselves here and say, this is for me? Yes. Now nobody's left out, okay? Here's what we're up against. It's the 40-40-40 mentality. This is what we're up against. So this third party survey has been done and it talks about for the people that reach age 65, 1% is wealthy, 4% are living stably, uh, financially stable, meaning they're, they're at least paying their bills, 5% are still working, 28% are dead before they reach 65, and 62% of our population is dead broke. Now, I actually do like math. I tease myself all the time and say that you don't have to be that great at math. My wife says there's two kinds of people. You heard her yesterday. Those are three kinds of people, those that can add and those that can't. So if you add these two segments together, look at this. 62 and 28 is how much? 90, right? So nine out of 10 is the same statistic for you all over here. And then add the 5%, they're still working. That means they're broke too. They're not able to retire at 65. So now you have 9.5 out of 10 people that are totally sucking wind. 
before they even reach age 65. By the way, knowing what you know about longevity, can you do something about that? Yeah. You can, right? This is the ultimate solution. So we point this out and then we show people what their additional in, uh, options are for income. And look at this. These are not necessarily positive things, but whether they are or aren't, these are all the possibilities that exist. So we show that to people as well. And here's what you need to know. If you don't have a dream, if you don't build your dream, somebody's going to hire you to build theirs. And that is such a brick in the forehead to a lot of people that it's important to talk about this aspect. You've got to help people figure out what's worth fighting for. That's why when I stood up here before you yesterday to kick off this convention, I showed you for me what was worth fighting for and the little things daily that pop up in my life that remind me of why I shouldn't ever find a good reason to complain. You remember that yesterday? Yeah, and so that's why it's important to focus on what people want. So we're not talking about years and years and years here. How about let's go from dis dis uh, discussing a 40-year strategy, let's discuss a 12 to a 24-month strategy. So remember, no matter what your generation is, we have the answer. We have the answer regardless of your generation. And when you think about that, whether you're a baby boomer, sometimes baby boomers think, I don't have enough time on my side to make enough traction to make a difference. But we're talking about 12 to 24 months. So now a baby boomer says, that's it? Wait a second, 12 to, I've been working 45 years of my life and I don't have any security around my future financially or that retirement plan. But you're telling me that I've got a 24 month strategy here? That's right, that's what I'm telling you. So we get to hire ourselves, we get to own our time, we have lifestyle freedom. That's an important term right there. Lifestyle freedom is very important. When we pulled, we took a whole group of people. We took the baby boomers, we took the generation Xers, and we took the millennials, and we said, what would be the term that you would describe freedom being? And collectively, that, those groups came up with lifestyle freedom. So then we talked about being able to earn while you learn. Here's what a lot of people do. They'll come into Young Jebby and they'll say, oh my goodness, this is so complex. How does that BTT work? How does immortalium work? Uh, this concept of epigenetics, I've got to understand that because people are certainly going to talk to me about epigenetics and I've got to be able to explain that to them. And, and no, no, no. You, you don't need to explain any of those things. See, that's what Dr. Wallach is for. By the way, he's speaking immediately after me. So we're going straight from this, straight into Dr. Wallach. And here's what you've got to know. There's a reason why Dr. Wallach has those books. There's a reason why those CDs exist. There's a reason why he has been able to go before a court of law and do something about his research and his findings so that he could talk about it on your behalf. So if you think for one second that you've got to spend your life being as smart as him, you'll be back on the 40-40-40 plan because in 40 years, you won't know a fraction of what he knows out of all of his years of experience. So we have to learn how to leverage his skill set so that you can leverage your skill sets. And when you marry those two things together, then you see that there's a symbiotic relationship. Oh, I like that word. I love it when I come up with awesome words. <laughs> symbiotic. So there's a symbiotic relationship that has to work back and forth. So anytime, here's what I do. So thinking as a pilot-minded person, I think about sitting in an airplane and I've got passengers over my shoulder and there could be 300 passengers behind me but they're going where I'm going because I'm the pilot of the plane so when somebody asks me a question I say I don't know let's call air traffic control and they say oh that's a good that's a good question why don't you park at terminal B after you land and when we go to terminal B we can find the answer to that question you're asking and we'll learn together so I just like parking people at different terminals that's all I do well, how does this work? I don't know, that's a good question. Let's go find it at this resource. But I'm constantly pointing people where to go because as soon as I start answering the questions about essential oils, as soon as I start answering the questions about the skincare line, then pretty soon they're like, oh, I had a question about how to get toe jam out with essential oils. Let's call Scott. And so then pretty soon, here comes the text messages and here comes the phone calls. Because you answered one question, now they think you know the answer to the next question. And you'll build your whole life around answering the phone, answering texts and emails to product related questions. Wouldn't it just be a whole lot easier if you could point to a book or a CD or a website to get that information, yes? Okay, let's keep going. Proven business plan, enhanced quality of life. This is almost like difficult. I had just gotten started and I have 10 minutes before Dr. Wallach starts. 
You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Welcome to Longevity. See, this is meant to very much re represent a target, and in the middle is the bullseye. This is who Longevity is, first and foremost, is we are about making sure that if you don't have your health, making sure you understand that if you don't have your health, you have nothing. So if, at the very least, you help people understand the importance of that, then everything else is in the peripheral there, and they'll start adding all that in. You heard what Juliet had to say yesterday about how to easy it is to switch where you shop. We're spending hundreds of dollars a month. I don't care if people are struggling financially or if you're single, you're spending hundreds of dollars a month at local stores, um, organic stores, the grocery stores, the Whole Foods markets kind of places, and even places like, I don't even know if you have those stores here. You have, you have anything like Walmart? Yeah. You have those kinds of stores here? Okay, we go there because it's convenient and it's the least expensive. You're spending hundreds of dollars a month there. You can either make Sam Walton more wealthy or you can start putting money in your pocket. And that's the objective. He doesn't need to be wealthy any further. You do, and I do. So when we help people understand how broadly scoped we are when it comes to product lines, and this can even be updated because we have more than that now. Let's keep moving. Then you get into the story of Dr. Wallach. Because when people understand the credibility of this man, and you're gonna hear from him in about 15 minutes from right now, I've just got five minutes extended here. So you're gonna hear from Dr. Wallace, but he is the world that we revolve around. Is Dr. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't be here. And when you build the company on his shoulders, then the attention gets driven in his direction and everything he's done with his life and you let him speak to some of these things. Why is he credible? Because of that. And why else is he credible? Because of that. And why else is he credible? Because of that. Most of these things people have not done in their lifetime, and if they had 10 lives, they still wouldn't get this stuff done. So look at this statement right here. When you help people understand that of all the volumes of material that they've written, that have been written, this is the most important thing that he has to say, and that's that if we just teach people that putting the nutrients into their body and letting their body do what it's supposed to do, they can have optimal health, that's the, 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 about the deepest you need to go in terms of explaining to people the power of our company when it comes to nutrition. Then we want to make sure that people <coughs> understand a few faces. So we talk a lot about Mary Lou Henner. She's very prominent, at least in the States right now, with Dancing with the Stars. And you look at some of the things that she's had to say about us. You look at um, uh, when, when we were founded. So we're you know, almost 20 years old now. But look at that list of very successful locations that we've been able to open and operate. So now people go, wow, this has really got a global footprint to it. And yes, we're publicly traded. There's our ticker symbol. You're welcome to follow us. You're welcome to uh, um, think about your financial future when it comes to our stock. Here's some celebrity brand ambassadors. You may or may not recognize some of these faces. And again, we can add to these faces, but Theo Ratliff is a prominent NBA all-star basketball player. You have a football legend. You have a, a, another basketball legend. And Steve Hess is an athletic conditioning coach for one of the professional teams back in the States. And then we go on to uh, talking about our challenge. Here's what the challenge is. And again, I know this says the United States. I totally apologize. We can come up with statistics for your backyard as well. But let's just look at some prominent things that are probably quite universal. We, as a country, meaning again in the States, we spend more on health care than the rest of the world combined. And the message we point out is that we still have two thirds of our population that is overweight or obese. And I'm sure that statistic is probably pretty universal. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay, so bless you. Nearly every major disease is on the rise. So when you think about having to get technical with people, just point that out. No matter what condition or what issue you have or you know that somebody has, those things are all on the rise. They're not going down or, or, or getting stabilized. And this is the statistic here universally that really grabs hold of me the most. Millennials are the first generation in history with a shorter life expectancy than their parents they should be asking the question, what the heck is going on? What is happening to us and why is this taking place and what are we gonna do about it? So now we're gonna talk about the solution. We get into uh, talking about the 90 essential nutrients, how those are administered into your health or into your body. Here's some bullets that we point out. If you wanna take a picture, I'll pause for a second, but I'm gonna keep moving pretty quickly here. 
Okay, all supplements are not equal. We talk about why that is. You can read faster than I can talk, so look at these so I can save a little bit of time. When it comes to getting results, absorption is everything. Now, this is probably not a pleasant story to talk about, but there are people professionally that clean out outhouses, and one of the things they complain about is the screens that catch the solids. And if you rinse all those off, you can still see tablets that are hardened and compact like rocks, and you can still, in some cases, see perhaps the branding on there. I've heard that. I haven't tested it myself, but I've been told that. So there's these healthy body start packs. And when people say, I have this issue or that issue, you can look at these healthy body start packs and maybe just recommend that they get started with one of those if they have a health related issue. You have the why. In other words, there's a reason why you're motivated to take action in your life. What we're gonna talk about now is the how. How do you take action to change your life in a positive direction? Well, here's a few ways that we show people to get started. Now keep in mind, the numbers you're going to see up here are built around US currency. So you just have to take your country. We know there's, we tested it yesterday, there's multiple countries in the room. So you're gonna have people saying, well, what about mine? You just have to do the conversion and do the math and uh, you can come up with these numbers. So we talk with people about the fact that for as little as $25, so maybe it's more like 40 in Australia, I don't know. What is it? 15, I went the wrong way, see? Look at that. So it's cheaper in Australia. So for as little as $15, you have lifetime membership to wholesale benefits to obtaining any of our Longevity products. Isn't that fantastic? So unlike a superstore that sometimes charge you annually, annually for a fee, we have the ability to pay one time and have the benefits to Longevity for the rest of your life. How cool is that? That's a huge benefit. It's not that big of a deal for people to see that that makes a lot of sense. And then we recommend that, you know, maybe it makes a lot of sense for you to at least take the 90 essential nutrients. But here's what we're really building toward. Most people, if they're honest and you give them a chance to be honest, you'll discover that they would like to have financial health as well. It's so easy to talk about physical health. I get it. We're like literally saving people's lives. For example, you know, if any one of us fell out into the aisle right now and needed, you know, uh, CPR or heart palpitations or something like that, the defibrillators, we would all do everything in our power to come beside them and to save their life physically. Somebody would call the emergency hotline here and the ambulance would show up. Other people would say soothing words to them to keep them calm. But the reality is what happens when people fall out in the aisle and they're dying right in front of you from a financial disease? Brokitis. You ever heard of that disease before? Oh, well, believe me, it's very real. And if you think cancer or diabetes or heart disease, just to name a few, are big deals, brokitis is a bigger deal. Because 9.5 or 9 people roughly out of 10 have that disease right now. And not diagnosed at least, do people have diabetes or cancer or heart disease? Does this make sense? Yes. But 9.5 out of people all around you every day, walking down the sidewalk, passing you in their car, they've all been diagnosed with brokitis. So why is it, why is it that we're a little more hesitant to go rescue that person from a death-defying disease than it is from one of the ones that we might have mentioned? Why is that the case? And I'll tell you why it's the case because some people don't look at bronchitis as a life-threatening disease. But let me be very clear, from my standpoint at least, or from my personal opinion or perspective. I put that picture of my family up there yesterday so that I could show you what motivates me every day to not take for granted the fact that I have the ability to use my brain and to use all of my faculties to go put my family in a financially stable position because someday my kids are going to grow up and they already are and they're going to say, you know, here's what I know about my parents. Do you realize that kids all tell stories about their parents? Don't you tell stories about your parents? Yep. You do. I tell stories about my parents. We judge our parents, we label our parents, we say the woulda, coulda, shoulda thing about our parents and don't you want your kids, no matter what they say about you, don't you want them to at least say, my parents did the absolute best they could to give us the absolute best life possible, yes or no? <coughs> and if you leave financial out of that equation, they will tell the story about how you didn't do this when you could have financially. Is it okay for me to say it that bluntly? Yes. Is that okay? Good. 
because you it's did? really, really important. <laughs> so if it's that simple, then there's only one thing holding us back. It's fear of being judged for not being a good leader when it comes to financial matters. Because here's the badge that we all wear. We say, well, I'm a construction worker. I'm a nurse. I'm a mathematician. I'm an astronaut. I build cars and I do auto mechanics. And so when you come along and say something related to financial prosperity, they say in your mind, what would you possibly know about those subjects? You're the mathematician. You're the automobile mechanic. You're the teacher. You're the acupuncturist. What would you possibly know about this topic? And this is where it stops us dead in our tracks. But here's what I want you to know. Your role and my role isn't yet either to be an expert on those topics. And you think you're supposed to be an expert on these topics. And so in your brain, you're putting this picture or this movie together that says, if I open my mouth about financial issues, they're going to judge me as being a self-proclaimed expert on these issues. They certainly won't listen or follow, follow me. But that's not your role. That's a false movie. The, the role or objective you have when it comes to financial related matters is to say, you know what? I've met some people. I've partnered with some people. I've teamed up with some people that are doing amazing things for people and their lives and their families on the subject of financial stability. And I'd love for you to have the opportunity to meet these individuals as I have. Here's what's happened for me since I've made a decision to take this topic seriously in my life. And then people suddenly say, oh, so you can lead me to somebody that has the answers. That's right, that's all I'm saying. Now let me ask you a question. If I could introduce you to these people that could have that kind of impact on your life as I believe it's having for me, would you want me to keep that information to myself or would you want me to share it with you? Sure. Sure. Don't you think that most people are going to say, share that with me? Yes. If you're really honest, don't you think if you put it on a platter like that and you tee it up like that, don't you think they're gonna say, I'm curious, Tell me more. But what happens is we mistake facts with the power of curiosity. We think that if we tell them all the information and just like regurgitate it onto people, how smart we are and what we know about our own company, then you're putting yourself in the limelight of being an expert. And that's not the key to success, as I will share with you. The key to success is to use the power of curiosity. You need and you must use the power of curiosity because what is it that kills the cat? Curiosity. curiosity, not your name. You didn't kill any cats. Curiosity killed the cat. So let's keep that in perspective. So moving along here, we talk about the CEO mega pack. Now, some people will say, you know what? People just don't have money to spend on CEO packs. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. The answer is yes, they do. They do. It's all a matter of creating value. Price is never the issue. Do you get that? Yeah. It is value that is the issue, not price. You know, the reality is, is I could change that number up there and I could call that $1,499 and you'd all go, <gasps> our CEO packs are now $1,499? What are you doing to us? But then I'd say, everyone be still. Give me an hour. Don't move a muscle. Just stay here. Make yourselves comfy. We'll supply some snacks and some food to make sure you're okay. I'd walk out of this room, and if possible, that in the next hour, I could go meet a complete stranger. And because of no pre-programming or lingering baggage in your head, I could go out there and create a relationship with somebody and show them the value for a CEO pack that cost $1,499 and have those people say, are you kidding me? Let me get this straight. You just offered me all of this and it's only $1,499? And I'd say, that's right. And they'd say, okay, I, it, it, it seems so, so good to be true. Could it really be? And I'd say, yes, it really could be. Come and see. And then they'd walk back in here and you'd have to decide, would you poison them and tell them it wasn't a good deal? Or would you say, yeah, based on what was shared, that was an amazing. 
matter of information that was just shared with you. Do you see where this is going? It's not the price, people. It's not the price. It is your belief around what it is that's truly being offered. Because here's the way I see it. I don't really so much care about the price of a CEO pack because here's what I know, whatever the price was, I'm sitting here going, where can I go? Where can I go and have the ability, whether it was $499 or $1,499, where can I go? And you might now start asking yourself the same question, where can you go? And you'd say it in first person singular, where can I go? And have the opportunity and the right to roll up my sleeves, get down in the trenches, get some dirt under my fingernails, and go to work for 12 to 24 months and put your family in a position to team up with this family here at Longevity, the Wallet family, and go ballistic and nuts and build an organization of tens of thousands of people all over the world that pay you the kind of money that's able to be made here residually over and over and over again, and you have the right to become a multi, multi, multi hundred heir, a multi, multi, multi thousand heir, a multi, multi, multi tens of thousand heir, a multi, multi, multi hundred thousand heir, a multi, multi, multi millionaire, where could you go to become a multi, multi, multi hundred millionaire? Where could you have the possibility to pull that off except in a company like Longevity? That's the question I'm asking. Is this starting to sink in yet? Yes. Now do you see the value? We're talking about one time in your life, putting yourself in a position financially to get products pound for pound, dollar for dollar, at wholesale in a little pack called the CEO pack where you should be taking products like these anyways and you probably already are and just do it one time. And now you have the ability to make a coding bonus, residual bonuses, a car bonus, infinity bonuses. Do you get that? And yet we don't tell people the good news about why that has such value and we withhold information and we prevent our people from radically, let me use that word, we prevent people from radically being capable of transforming their lives. We withhold information because we're afraid of being judged. And our own fear is costing people the right to be free of the disease of brokeitis. You don't have to be broke anymore ever again if you'll just follow the footsteps of the leaders that have gone before you. Are you with me? Yeah. Does this make sense? Yeah. Would it be any more, could I possibly explain this any more simply or matter of factly? Could I do that in your opinion? No. No, okay, thank you, let's move on. So there's the CEO pack. So by the way, the point here is, show them why the value is there for the CEO pack, and if at the end of the day, they've looked under every rock, asked every aunt, every brother, every sister, looked in their bank account, looked at their investment accounts, looked at their depleting 401ks, and everything is not lining up for them to be able to come up with that CEO pack, then just work backwards and don't make them feel like the person that's not capable of being successful here. Say, that's okay. Let's do what you can do. What do you have? Let's find some products that you can transition in your household right now and we'll get you the $25 lifetime membership. You can upgrade to a CEO pack later. That's how I handle that. So moving on, here's what you get with your CEO pack. Okay, everybody wants to take a picture. Hurry up. There's some samples of CEO packs. Don't see that picture and say, that's it? No, those are examples of what CEO, we just picked the, uh, the uh, nutritional CEO mega pack, we picked the body transformation um, weight management system CEO pack, and here's how we show people they get their money back. When you go out and show people the value of a dream, and is he online right now? Okay, would you just stop me? Can I keep talking while we're getting Dr. Wallach online? Okay. All right, so this is showing you what happens when you find four people that are motivated as you were to radically transform their life. And so if I could say, we're not beating around the bush here. We're looking for people that want to transform their life and they're going to copy you. And now let me show you a theoretical example. So keep in mind, what kind of an example is this? 
Theoretical. It's a theoretical example. It means that we could put in different numbers and the outcome would be different. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're using, in the upper right hand corner here, we're talking about 150 BV. So it's hard to put a dollar amount up there because everyone would have a different one based on your country and your, your currency and, and rates of exchange. So let's just say for theory example that it's roughly a $150 example, okay? Your currency might take that number down or it might increase it. I don't know. But here's what I do know. The four people that you had from the previous page that got started with you and they want to radically transform their life, look what happens here. Just by switching over a few dollars every month on products they're probably already using, you've got a residual income here of 40 to 50, maybe 60 bucks. And then when they do the same thing, you're going to add another couple hundred bucks, roughly. And they do the same thing, you're going to add another six or seven hundred dollars. And by the way, let me just stop right there. I don't know what the statistic is here, but I do know what the statistic is roughly in the U.S. And here's what it is. If that same amount of money, so we've got 48, 192, and 670, if you add all that together, that's over 900 bucks. If you had that amount of money coming into you residually every month, that would have, in the U.S., eliminated somewhere around 80% of all the bankruptcies that took place in the previous year or the year before that. We're talking about $800 to $1,000 a month. That's big stuff. Okay, so here's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to pause this because 30 seconds. Okay, while well, he's coming live, we're gonna pause this, but here's what I want you to know. We're not done yet. You okay if we finish this up after Dr. Wallach? Okay, so let's transition to Dr. Wallach, give him the respect that he deserves. When he comes on live, when you see his face, I want you to get as loud and noisy and wacky as you possibly can, showing him the respect that he deserves. He's the founder of our company. He's the innovator and the visionary for everything we do here at Longevity, and he's constantly traveling all over the world. There we go.